It doesn't even look like it's in the same universe. Broadcasting live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show. Today we're talking about Blue River in Tishomingo, Oklahoma. And if your spider senses are tingling, uh, later on in the show we're talking about a real-life Spider-Man in down ca- downtown OKC. I'm Brett. And I am the guy who's able to put words together. <laughs> what? Do you want... Are you... I didn't know if you were going to go into... Okay. All right, we had a chance to uh, check out the common room. Yes, so we uh, checked out a place that... Relatively new. Well, it's brand new, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. called the Common Room. It is inside of the Chickasha Inn on 4th and Grand mm-hmm. in Chickasha, Oklahoma. Yep. It used to be a little dive bar in the hotel. That was there forever. That was there forever, but the pandemic destroyed it. It went out of business. Mm-hmm. So this place is under new management, and we thought we'd give it a... We, we thought we'd check it out. But here's the cool thing. I, you talk about management. We're not talking... To, you know, we always talk about multifaceted you know our our buddy ronnie davenport over at teleboard does a little bit of everything but let's talk about for just a second the you said new ownership the dude is a freaking train conductor right that is my understanding i mean the dude drives a train and he runs a dang bar come on well i believe that the person that actually runs the bar is courtney well yes we met her we she's her. super nice super nice yeah uh, they've got a lot of a lot of things in the works. They're mm-hmm. working on getting some live music in there. But anyway, long story sure, short, yeah. if you're looking for something to do in the town of Chickasha, I'd say definitely check out the common room. Yeah, we happen to go in on Wednesday when uh, it's free pool night, and you got your butt handed. I to got you. my butt handed to me by by a woman, by a local, by a local. That and that's what happens when you you know city slickers come into these local. Own establishments. You, you you from around here. She she took you what for about a grand for about a about a grand. <laughs> yeah, about a grand. But yeah, they've got karaoke, karaoke. Got all kinds of stuff coming. You definitely want to check them out if you're in Chickasha proper. I would agree with that 100. percent But we have something to talk about. Let's give them something to talk about. Something blue. Something blue. Something that's like what it's something new. Something borrowed. Something blue. No, that's wedding. That's for a wedding. Yes. This no, is something different. We are talking about the Blue River in Tishomingo, Oklahoma. So this thing winds its way through the southern region of Oklahoma. It's really majestic, and if you are a nature lover, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised about what you find at Blue River. I don't think you use the adjective majestic lightly when you talk about this place. I don't. I I, mean, I actually don't use the word majestic very often at all. Right. We usually say words like, so cool, that's cool, it's awesome, but majestic is, you're in some pretty, I mean, I think you're in some tall cotton or some deep blue water, beautiful deep blue water for us to say something like that. Absolutely. So, the Blue River is one of the last streams in the state of Oklahoma that actually flows from its natural source without any interference of man-made structures. We talk about a lot of water in Oklahoma a lot. Yeah. that has some that has history with the Army Corps of Engineers coming in and making it bigger, making it wider, making yep. it deeper, yep. damming this, damming that, mm-hmm. because you know Oklahoma was a giant dust bowl at one point in time, right. So the fact that this is a river that stands on its own historically is cool. You're right. But it uh, sets atop the Arbuckle Simpson Aquifer, and it, it that is the source of drinking water for all of the nearby inhabitants mm. in Johnson County, but more specifically about, about eight miles from Tishomingo. But it has six and a half miles of shoreline. And nobody really knows anything about it. It's 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 probably one of Oklahoma's best kept secret hidden gem. It's in that hidden gem category. It really is. It really is a hidden gem, and it's not just because everything about it is gorgeous. Right. I think the the water is the star of the show. Crystal clear water. You can't call yourself. I mean, you can. You can call yourself the Blue River at Whitewater, and probably. Obviously, with the name Blue River, 
you're going to expect blue water. Well, yeah. Like I, when I go to Whitewater and it says Raging Rapids, I expect Raging Rapids. Right. So the, <laughs> it does live up to the name. But more importantly, everything around it, you're you're surrounded by lush greenery on all sides. Big boulders. Dude, you don't, there's not enough water in Oklahoma with big boulders. No. It, I'm telling you, the, I looking at the pictures, it doesn't, you know, we just did a show recently where we're like, it doesn't even look like it's in the same universe. Right. It's literally looked like it's out of Montana or something like that. But more importantly, I think this is really the perfect spot for a lazy summer day. No, I totally agree with you on that. You totally agree with me what, on what, Brett? That it looks like a great place for a lazy sunny day. Yeah, with the temperatures the way they are right now, oh man, anything with water in it is great, but anything with crystal clear water and lots of shade, oh yeah, dude, I'm in love. And as far as activities go, there's a ton of stuff to do. For starters, this is one of the best fishing spots in the state. Oh yes. From November through March, Blue River is designated as a trout area. It's stocked with rainbows every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. During the spring and summer, channel catfish are regularly stocked. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most popular activities at Blue River, but more importantly, it's one of the only bodies of water in the state that you can find trout in the winter. Well, in more to that point, uh, other than that, the, you can regularly find black bass, cra uh, crappie, Every President's Day, though, they have a huge trout derby, the Blue River Trout Derby. You have anglers come from all over the country to compete in this. It's a big deal. It is. It's a big deal in a beautiful place. But just as a little side, as a side. Sure. Just as a small aside. Did you know that you and I have a mutual friend that makes a lot of money taking pictures of fish dressed in human clothes? You're kidding me. Dude, he says it's easy. He says it's like shooting fish in apparel. Oh, God. I was going to say, Ronnie Davenport does that, too? <laughs> <laughs> Shooting fish in apparel. Oh, my goodness. I thought it was great. You, Yeah, that was a pretty good... You're a dad. I got you another one. With it. I got okay. another one, sure. Why are goldfish so lousy at poker? I have no idea. They don't like flushes. Oh. <laughs> I just can't stop. You can't stop. I'm pun-stoppable. Oh my goodness. Yes, just you're on a roll. <laughs> you're on an absolute tear right now. So outside of fishing though, you can do some hunting. There's deer, turkey, and wild hog hunting. But more importantly, the stuff that I like, the stuff that we like because mm -hmm. of the kids. Sure. Swimming, wading through this water, jumping off the rocks, relaxing in the sun. They but, check they check every box. But one of the things that I think is more nightmare fuel for you, Brad. Uh, I, I already know. This already is a know. class two or three river, perfect for kayaking and canoeing. Perfect for every. I'm I'm glad it is a perfect activity for you. Did I ever tell? Have I ever told the story about my first kayaking trip? I wasn't there. No, no, you were not there. Okay. Go for it. So we were in the general vicinity of Blue River. I had bought. A hundred and twenty-three dollar kayak somewhere. Just a basic. Oh yeah, not built for this. I'm guessing, but go ahead. But we're in the general vicinity. It was not Blue River, but we are, it was in the general vicinity. Mm -hmm. There was a dam that they released the water on in regular intervals, mm -hmm. which would change the water volume of this little stretch of river a lot. And they did it like three or four times a day, so it made for some really cool kayaking. And we were cruising along and. I was smoking a cigarette. Children do not smoke cigarettes. It's bad for you. It is bad. But I was smoking a cigarette, and we're going along, and there's a boulder. God, I can't even. I'm cringing. So there's a boulder. I'm cruising along, and I see this drop, and it's got to be an eight-foot drop. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, I guess this is where I die. Right. You know, I saw some kids do it, but, you know, I'm not a kid. Yeah. So I hit that thing. My kayak goes all the way under the water. All the way under the water. I pop up. 25 yards from where I went into the water. I'm on the bottom of my kayak, holding myself up. And the guys that I'm kayaking with are like, dude, how did you do that? And I'm like, you fall out of my kayak? It's kind of easy. And they're like, no, dude, your cigarette's still lit. Really? I was completely soaked from head to toe. Wow. Had gone into the river, flipped out of yeah, my kayak, and no. somehow ended up on top of my kayak with a lit cigarette in my mouth. Dude, why aren't you like traveling the country doing TED talks? <laughs> I have I mean, no idea. 
my kayaking story is not as cool as that. In fact, it's embarrassing. And we've told there, it a there million times. There were tears. There were tears. Oh my gosh, man! Well, welcome back, dude. I had to, when was this? That was the, a long time ago. Wow. So, as far as the access points for the river, there are there are not any outfitters for kayaking kayaking and canoeing on the river. Legally not allowed. Really? Huh. You'd think they'd be, that'd be a hell of a way to to, to cash a check or two, but they're, I, it looks like they're trying to keep this thing... Yeah, as, they're trying to keep it, yeah, keep yeah. the beauty of it intact, and so I'm, I'm fine with it. There are several public access points, but they are all regulated by the Blue River Conservation Group, which issues passports for entry into oh, the okay. area. There is a small fee related to that, but it's it's not much. They do have primitive campgrounds in latrines, but there is... Plenty of actual camping nearby in Durant, uh, Texoma, the Chickasaw National Recreation Area. So if you're in the area, there are plenty of places to camp if you're not into the primitive campgrounds. When you said latrines and you went, but, and you went, but, I was thinking, but you could always go whiz and, uh, you know, you could go use the restroom. I really thought you were going to say just do it in the Blue River. No. Okay. I don't think anybody wants it to be the yellow river or no. <laughs> or the brown. <laughs> Would it yellow and blue make green? Yeah. Okay, so no. Yeah, 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 nobody yeah, wants yeah. it to be the green river. I don't know why I thought that. I thought I mean, he's going to tell them to go wade. <laughs> so if you're new to the area, it's your first time going into the area. There's a place called Scotty's Blue River One Stop. At the entrance of the Blue River, you can get all your supplies and they'll be able to answer any questions. They serve breakfast and lunch and carry lots of convenience air, convenience items and fishing gear. So if you've got questions or you need some last-minute gear, they should be able to help you out. They also have full RV hookups if you're looking to spend a couple of days there in your camper. Once again, another home run. I mean, it's like it, it it's a beautiful, beautiful part of the country, beautiful part of the state. If you want more information, we've got all the links in the show notes, so check it out. And coming up next, Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can until he gets arrested. Hang time. So the other day, I was out randomly and started up a conversation with the person standing in line next to me. Can you afford the gas to be out randomly? I'm just asking. <laughs> no, I can't, actually. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway. So the, I started talking about the show or, you know, I, I didn't go like randomly up to some person and be like, Hey, listen to my show. No, we were talking about travel and tourism and they asked me what I did. I said, I do this show and I pointed at my shirt Yeah, and they, they looked at me like I was, like I was insane. Like, yeah, and then I looked t- down at my shirt yeah. and I wasn't wearing an only an okay shirt. So it didn't make any it didn't sense. Make any sense. That I was like, yeah, I do this show. They're like, okay, the red shirt show? <laughs> it was literally just a plain t-shirt, right. but I was pointing at nothing. Yeah. So I think that's a... A sign? A clear sign that I need to replace all of the shirts in my closet yeah. with carbon copies of my only and okay shirts. Or in your kids, too. They need to only wear only and okay shirts. If you have a small business and you need that level of advertising, mm-hmm. then you've got to reach out to our friend Ronnie Davenport. He's a firefighter, a screen printer. I think he's got his law degree now, so if you need help with a Supreme Court case or something like that, I'm sure he could help you. But more importantly, if you need shirts, he's the guy to go to. And if you need a free quote, you can give him a call at 405-517-2174. Or find him on the web at tailboardapparel.com. So, Brett, what is up in the news? Well, in the news, I don't know if you've been living under a rock or living... If you've been living at the top of Devon Tower, then you would know that a man scales OKC's Devon Tower as an anti-abortion protest. This story comes from KFOR and uh, Carrie King. A man climbed Devon Tower Devon Tower in OKC on Tuesday morning as an anti-abortion protest. Hold on. What? Us quoting KFOR on this whole thing yeah. feels like we're doing them a disservice. No, we're doing it wrong because this is Spider-Man. So we should be quoting the Daily Bugle. Like, J. Jonah Jameson should be saying that Spider-Man... This, Peter! <laughs> this, is, this is all some sort of conspiracy and Spider-Man is in cahoots with the Green Goblin. What do you mean Spider-Man climbed the Devon Tower? So, as expected, the guy, I don't know if you saw the video. 
Did you see any of the video? I saw pictures. I did not watch Dude, the video. That takes some real stones. The guy that calls himself the pro life Spider Man, also known as Mason Duchamps, he is no stranger to climbing buildings. He's climbed buildings from everywhere, from New York City. I, I think at one point he's climbed the Aria Hotel, which is six hundred feet with nothing. I can't climb a ladder to the roof to get a no kite. supply, dude. I can't. No. I can't walk the distance of Devon mm-hmm. Pet Tower without a bottle of water. He climbed it. Only using, you know, like rock climbers use chalk? Yes. He only did it using chalk on his hands. That's a 50-story building. That's That's crazy. Yeah, that's huge. So he reached the top where officials were waiting for him and and took him into custody, naturally. But he had a smile on his face. In fact, there's a picture floating around of him, someone taking it from an inside-the-building perspective when he's given the freaking hang-loose sign. Mm -hmm. But he was... uh, he was only he was arrested and only booked on a misdemeanor trespass, trespassing charge, which I'm sure he's got pe- his Venmo probably pays for his bail. Uh, I'm sure you're probably right, but you said he climbed the Aria, which yeah. is 600. Was that the same thing? Was it a pro pro life? Yeah, he did that one uh, in protest of COVID nineteen, the COVID ma- COVID nineteen mandates. mandates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's taken social distancing to a whole nother level, uh, like 600. It's six feet, please, not 600 feet. 600 feet in the air. How badly do you want to die? I, mean, I don't I, know. I just, like I said, I you're you're hard-pressed to get me to climb on a ladder 10 feet to hang Christmas lights. More importantly, though, this is Oklahoma. Yeah. You're going to climb 50 stories in Oklahoma. I get it in New York, whatever. It's New mm-hmm. York. Yeah. You climb the Empire State Building, mm-hmm. whatever. This is Oklahoma. We have straight line winds that are 110 miles an hour out of the blue for no damn reason. Well, Emily Sutton uh, says that winds were near 35 to 40 miles an hour at yeah. the top. So you've driven your car in 30 to 40 mile an hour winds. Oh, yeah. I, I have a hard time keeping my 3,000 pound truck on the highway in yeah. 40 mile an hour winds. Oh, yeah. It, my Tahoe wants to go topsy turvy. This guy was dangling from the seam in between windows. My cousin made a comment about it saying, well, if you look at the design of the building, it just it's just a big ladder. I'm like, that's no, you, no, that, that's if you that's a ladder cranked up to an, a, a 12. More importantly, even if even if it does stair step like that, it doesn't stair step in a in increments that fit the human body. If this guy was 13 feet tall, then maybe. Yeah, I think they're. We're talking about rungs that are, you know, 10 feet apart. Right. It took real... Let's not disc, discount the fact that the dude did it, didn't break a sweat. He didn't get to the top, because I think he got to the point where he's like, I don't think I can do this. And not to mention, they're like, you're not going to do this. I, I don't know. I, and I didn't see him dismount. Obviously, he made it off there, but... So when he got to the top, he didn't accidentally... Like, the, the cops didn't come over and high-five, high-five him. Like, ah! Yeah. Oh! yeah. <laughs> I think his goal was to get to the, there's a light up there. Yeah. I think he was trying to, that was, that was the trophy is to get to the light, but hmm. he, but he didn't make it. But what he probably would have been really cool is if he would have dropped a freaking only an okay banner off the side of that thing. We should have called, well, we didn't know, but if we would have known, we could have called Ronnie Davenport. He could have printed a banner that you could have seen from, from I-40. From I-40. Easily. So I think. We probably need to order one of those just in case. In case this, or in case we want to try. That's a big negatory. Well, we're yeah. both scared of heights. We are. But we're not scared of good reviews or anything of the like. If you go to a cabin, if you go to a bed and breakfast, if you go to a, a fancy gas station that has killer cheeseburgers, and you know that we've talked about it, tell them. Absolutely. Tell them that you found them on the Only an OK show. And no, you can't get a discount. You're, well, I mean, maybe. You might. You should ask. You I think that, ask. Was, that would be a good way to start every conversation when you're out and about traveling and taking part in tourism in the state of Oklahoma. Ask them if they have the Only an OK discount. Or can I get the Only... What, what, do the, what do the guys get when they're in here? Oh, they just got coffees. Oh. <laughs> Well, this has been the Only an OK Show. I am Harley. And I'm Brett. And we're out of here. Peace.
you have hot dogs for fingers. How do you not eat your fingers? What do you eat? Chicken. I thought it was like smashed. I thought it was. It looked like when you take a slice of bread and roll it with a rolling pin. I was like, he doesn't eat bread. What are you eating? It, I couldn't tell what it was. Did you make the chicken? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. What's our cold open? Just going to talk about. Yeah, we'll talk about the common room. Common room. Okay. So I don't have to worry about. Hey, I did this thing because I didn't do anything. I went to Texas. I haven't done anything. Okay. Watch Stranger Things. Have you watched it yet? Um, I am like three or four episodes in, so don't. Oh, I'm not. I'm literally just now. It'll be episode six tonight if I get to watch it tonight. Now we were uh, we were two seasons behind. Oh, you're not to even to this. No, we are now. Oh, but when it came out. We we're like, oh yeah, we should. Everybody's raving about the new, and yeah. we went to, and I was like, I don't remember any of this. Is that the washing machine? Yeah. <laughs> the no. Yet. Do what? The primaries the for what? Oh, I have no idea. Night. Anyway, go ahead. So anyway, we were we went back and we you know we started season four. We were like, oh, yeah, let's watch that. I'm like, what shit? The- yeah, I don't know what any of this stuff is happening. So we went back and looked at our history, and we stopped mm. at the end of we started season one or season episode one of season two. We were like thirty three percent of the way done, mm-hmm. and that was it. Like, it was like, yeah, well, that's the thing you show up for this season. If you're hell, even if you've been watching, you're like, wait a second, yeah, where did he get? When did he get a mustache? Like. You look at the progression of the characters, you're like, we've literally watched these kids grow up. Yeah. Man. How far are you into four? Three or four episodes? Have you seen the... God, I no, can't even... shut up. You can talk about season three? God, I don't remember. <laughs> can you talk about it? Because I don't remember it. It's a good show. It is. Last season was really good. This season, what do you think about this season so far? Um... You start getting skin in the... No, I'm kind of... Okay, I'm torn. Okay. Because at, from one point, I'm like, you know, like new stuff's happening, and they're mm. in different in, different yeah, yeah, situations. Yeah. But then from the other side, I'm like, where's all the cool... You know, where's the shit that they were doing last time? Like, yeah, why aren't they teamed up and working right. together and having, you know... Yeah, like, when do we get the when do we get the, the band, the original lineup back exactly. together? Yeah. yeah. Um... And there's also, at one point, I'm like, wait a second, they're in the desert, and then they're not? Oh, yeah, I forget. They're yeah. uh, uh, polar opposites. And then you've got the situations going on uh, overseas. And da-da. and you look at, okay, so I'm one of those people, I go, you know, IMDB characters, because I'm like, all right, how old is this kid? There's one of these kids in there, the guy, the you've seen it, or I'm not spoiling anything, the kind of douchebaggy ba- basketball player guy. Yeah. He's 27 in real yeah. life. Now, one of the kids, I think, is dramatically older than the others. Yeah, and you and can I can't tell. Re- I can't remember who it was, but it's like not one that you would s- expect, I think. Well, okay. Oh, terrible with names. Works at the video store. Yeah. He's in his 30s. Is he really? Yeah. No way. Yeah, he's like 33. True wow. story. Wow. And, you know, the kids are, they're kind of, they're in the right age range. You know, Eleven just turned 18 recently. That became a big deal. But there's a couple of the outlier teens that just graduated that are well into their 20s. But they, they've they cast them pretty well to where it's like, like you said, there's one, there's at least a character in there you're like, okay, you don't look like a teenager. Or yeah, you don't look like you should be in your 20s, and you are. Right. But they, as far as casting goes, I, I didn't know Winona Ryder, you know how old she is? 50. 50, yeah. It doesn't seem right. Does she seem like she should be older? Older than me? what? Be- okay, older than 50, like say no. late late 50s. No. I the reason I guess way the reason why I feel that way is because she's been in so many things that it's really you just think that she's been around But when you were a teenager, you watched movies with her in it as a teenager. Right. So she should be really close to your it, age. But it doesn't, I guess it doesn't seem that way. When you're a kid, you think that everybody in the movies is older than you anyway. Got you, it. I didn't really put two and two together that, you know, uh, the girl that played Andrea on 90210 was like 35 years old trying, trying to play a junior in high school. 
until way later was like, you're kidding me. Yeah. So, no, I don't, I don't look at age like that, but I do like to see, okay, how I, I just like, I'm an IMDb or like I spend a lot of time going, okay, hang on a second. I don't make, I don't pause it, but I jump on there and go, okay, let me, who, who's that guy? Who's that guy? Who's that mm-hmm. guy? But I, if you haven't seen episode four for me, episode four. Okay. Shut up. We're done. It was good. It's really good. It yeah. grabs you. Spoiler alert. So episode four okay. is good. Now this isn't a spoiler. I'm gonna throw this out and we'll get started. Dude, I will stab you in the eye. No, if you it's a. Th- for me. It's not a spoiler. Is this season or is it not? Could it not be a sequel to Nightmare on Elm Street? Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. With all the imagery, you've yeah, got. I the, can see that. At one point, I was like, "This is Dream Warriors, damn near." Except yeah. they're not all in the same dream zone at the same time. I was like, "This is Dream Warriors in." Whatever his freaking name is, Necron or what's the bad guy's name? I don't I can't, know that he's named him. They then you have named. a name. Okay, well then shut the mouth. Ma- shut the mouth, Varric. Shut the mouth. You've seen him. Shut the mouth. Anyway, he's got this. Okay, just yeah, saying yeah. it could be a it could be a spiritual sequel to Nightmare on Elm Street. Agreed. Let's go. Okay. Okay. And three, two, one. And welcome to the sh- why is it that so hard right there? And welcome to the show. <laughs> I don't want I'm taking a drink. It's my lips that need to not get hung up on each other. Because I got big lips. That's getting cut out of the show. It, I have big, I have enlarged lips that are engorged with blood. Three, two, one. <laughs> when you kind of smile, when it starts in your, you smile. You kind of smile with your eyes a little bit. And mm-hmm. It's so cute. Uh-huh. Three, nice. two, that's going to go in the opening. Three, two, one. And welcome to the show. Today we're just I want to say something. I see that and I want to say something else. Okay. Three, two, one. And welcome to the show. Today we're talking about Blue River and <laughs> I tried so hard not to flub it that I just kind of like drove over a speed bump oh really God. slowly. Okay. Three. And welcome to the show. To the show. Okay. Three, two, one. And welcome to the show. Today, we're talking about Blue River and Tisha Mingo, Oklahoma. And a little bit later, we're going to get your spidey senses tingling because we had a real life. You need to start over. Why? You don't like that? No, I don't. We get your spidey senses tingling? (laughs) Okay. Three, two, one. And welcome to the show. Today, we're talking about Blue River and Tisha Mingo, Tisha Mingo, Oklahoma. Three, two, one. And welcome to the show. Today, we're talking about Blue River and Tisha Mingo. I saw you doing that thing with your hand. Threw me off. Three, two, one. And welcome to the show. Today we're talking about. Bl- <laughs> okay, I'm done. You're doing such a good job. Right, ready? Three. The kid is okay. hot tonight. Whoa! And where will it be tomorrow? And will it make it through the intro? Yeah. You see him stumbling so far. You see him stumbling to the show. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. 